Hey everybody, Ed Homewood, Old Guy Hi-Fi Channel. I hope everyone's doing well today. Today we're gonna to take a look at this very impressive, very well-built FIO K9 AKM balanced headphone amp DAC preamp. It's a whole bunch of stuff in one box and it's really good. So sit back, relax, and we'll talk about the K9 AKM. So the FIO K9 AKM, I think, is marketed by FIO as a high-end desktop solution, and it really is. Um, I think they also market it toward that high-end gamer market. I requested a sample because I wanted to listen to it as a DAC, because it's got that DAC chipset I love in it, the AKM 4499EXEQ plus 4191EQ uh, switch resistor multi-bit hybrid Delta Sigma DAC chipset thing that I love so much. And this, it, it sounds wonderful. So I used it for a lot of the time it's been here as a DAC only, not as a headphone amp, as a DAC only. And at $529, I think it acquitted itself quite well as a DAC only. Now, the, de the technical details are it has a full linear power supply already installed, 18,800 microfarads worth of capacitance. It uses an XMOS XUF208 XMOS processing chip along with a high-end SPDIF receiver and a high-end uh, oscillator clock and the combination of those two along with AKMs, uh, what they call uh, DWA routing technology, digital weighted averaging noise reduction circuitry thing, helps reduce jitter and noise and everything else. This thing has a just an absolutely inky dark background noise floor, just nothing. It's absolutely clean as a whistle. Um, it is a very powerful headphone amp. It has two of the THX AAA 788 plus uh, headphone amps. So it's two watts at 32 ohms and 780 milliwatts at 300 ohms. Very powerful, fully balanced again, um, has all the latest Bluetooth, Bluetooth codecs, all the nice uh, Aptex HD and LDAC and all that other stuff. Um, it is really, really interesting. Now, the one thing it doesn't have, and I'll talk about it a little bit, is it doesn't have a remote control, which I kind of wish it had. It does have an app. And in just a moment, I'm going to cut away and show you some screenshots from the app uh, on my tablet. Now, the audio quality will be less than perfect because I have to use the mic that's in the tablet because of the screen capture software I'm using. So, you know what? Let's do that now, and I'll come right back. So here we are in the FIO control amp for the FIO K9 AKM. As you can see, the software has identified the device. And this is kind of the main screen when you come in. It's called the status screen you see along the bottom. So UAC is USB mode, really nothing to worry about there. Status indicator pattern, that is the ring of lights around the volume control. You can make it whatever you want to, choose the number of colors you might want to have if you want to have it different. Bluetooth codec, you can select which Bluetooth codecs you want or don't want. Um, and then, of course, select your input source, any of the ones that are available. Down along the bottom, you'll see four icons. We're in status. Let's go to EQ. And you have a full graphic equalizer. And actually, you can save graphic settings, obviously. And actually, you have a one where you can customize it by choosing individual frequencies, how much gain, the Q, so forth, anything along those lines that you might want to have. So back to the regular EQ. Now, along the bottom, we go to audio. And this is where, and it's a bit of a misnomer, it's low pass filter. And it actually is the digital filters for the DAC itself. So sharp roll off, slow roll off, et cetera, et cetera. And you can choose and change them here any way you want to, uh, should you want to. So we'll go back out here. Now, channel balance, obviously the left to right balance, it can be a preamp. Uh, you don't have a remote volume control here, but you have volume obviously on the unit itself. Again, going back down along the bottom, we're going to go to the far right to guide. And that shows you the K9 AKM and all of its inputs and goes into it, all identifies all of the connections and so forth. And obviously then gives you the ability to have kind of an owner's manual here uh, and go over the basic functions, kind of quick start guide as it were in the, uh, obviously in the app itself. So we'll come back out to the status app and you can see we're all set. Now I'm gonna to touch the gear icon in the upper right hand corner and that brings us to what's our Bluetooth version. There'll be updates, obviously. You can name the device if you want to. 
if you have more than one FIO device that you're controlling with the software. You can do firmware upgrades from here. You can clear this device out of the software so it's unpaired. You can restore it to the factory default settings or you can power it down by doing a system standby. So that's the FIO control app. Um, it's nice, it works fine. It's not the most powerful thing in the world, but you know what? It's better than nothing and that's for sure. So back to our regularly scheduled programming. Well, we're back from that, and hopefully you got, you know, learned something about the app. And it's kind of interesting you get the digital filters and all kinds of fun stuff. So on the unit itself, on the front panel, we have an XLR balanced headphone out. We have a quarter inch single ended out, a 4.4, excuse me, 4.4 millimeter balanced out. Nice big volume knob. It's got good feel to it. Um, it can be configured as a headphone amp with volume. It can be configured as a preamp with volume, or it can be configured as a fixed line output as a DAC. It has high, low, medium gain. It has an input selector so we can do USB, optical, coax, a line in, we'll talk about that, or Bluetooth. And then because again, no remote control, it has a muting button. So if it's on your desktop and the phone rings, it's just really easy to hit the muting button. On the side, it has a USB-C. So if you have a friend come over and they wanna play something off their phone or tablet or whatever, you can just plug in there. On the back, we've got balanced out, single ended out, we have a line in. So if you have a, a turntable with a phono preamp built in, here you've got a preamp right here, just plug it in and go, you've got it all set up. It also has another balanced in on the small little balance connector, and I don't remember the size, I'll put it down here when I look it up. Spit of coax, spit of toss link, USB-B, Bluetooth, AC power, chunky, heavy, all aluminum construction, it's a weighty beast. So. I've been really impressed with this thing. And again, I brought it in primarily as a, to listen to it as a DAC, because I brought together four DACs all with the same chip in it. And you'll either have seen that review or it will be coming out where I talk about them and the chipset a little bit more in depth. So I put it in the big system first and foremost, uh, and that's probably 70% of the way I've listened to it since I've had it. So I, I threw everything I had at it, all the amps, everything from the Hegel H190 all the way to my little AXR100, Audiolab, Arcam, Cambridge, Galleon, two of those, um, uh, Advanced Paris, two of those. So, and all my speaker systems, including um, the big, um, triangle Duetta 40ths, which I have on loan. It, I tell you what, it acquitted itself absolutely perfectly. It was resolute. It was as good as any other DAC I've had in here, with the exception of one, the Cord Cutis I really liked. I thought this, I actually thought this was better than the Pontus. Um, it rivals my Bifrost. Um, it rivals, it's, it rivals the the Gishelis, it's a little bit different than them. They have a little warmth and a little better bass response than almost any other AKM DAC chip I've heard. Um, I do prefer the sound of this better than the Orchard Audio piece, which is very good and super clean, but this has a little bit of warmth to it, which I really liked. So I listened to it hard and heavy in the, in the big room and I threw some really good recordings at it. I threw a, a lot of stuff at it, but the one, the standout ones were first this recording from Eric Burden called Tell Your River Runs Dry. Now, Eric Burden's been performing probably since the early 60s and he's got a voice very much like Johnny Cash, that very characterful, very deep, very world weary, kind of raspy, just really engaging and really interesting to listen to voice. And it's a great album full of good songs as well. So this again, and I'll talk about overall sound quality. This didn't get in the way of anything. Um, and then I wanted to listen to something a little different, a little more upbeat, a little funkier. And so Herbie Hancock and the Headhunters, Return of the Headhunters from 1998. Bernie Maupin and the guys and Herbie, great, just great funk, jazz, fusion stuff. Uh, drums were great. Bass was great. All of the instruments were great. Herbie's synth sounded great. All the horns sounded great. Just wonderful overall. And I'll talk, like I said, I'll talk about tonal balance in a minute. Now, to really throw something a little bit difficult at it with very complex passages and a lot of things going on, I used this recording from Jean-Michel Jarre called Equinox Infinity. And it's all synth driven and it's uh, really good. I've been listening to Jean-Michel Jarre for probably 40 years. Um, and it's just wonderful stuff. It's, it's really interesting synth music. It's not, it's not space music and it's not, it is electronic, I guess it would fall in that category, but it's just really, really cinematic and sweeping some of it. And just, there's so much stuff going on that it can trip a piece of equipment up and it 
This never faltered, not even for one minute. And again, for me, a DAC's job is to convert the digital signal to analog and provide the absolute best analog signal that it can out to the rest of the chain. I'm a source first guy. First link in the chain has to be the strongest. So when I use Artivana to feed this, that is bit perfect, so that's not a problem. Um, and then everything else is gonna have its own sound characteristic. And I could, on some of the more revealing stuff, detect that this has a little bit of that AKM warmth that I really, really like, but great dynamics. I never felt that this got in the way of anything I put through it. Just, it was just performed admirably, and I really, really liked it a lot. Now, on the desktop, um, it was great. I feed, I was feeding it from a Wii Mini via optical, and I was feeding it USB from my laptop, again, with Artivana on it. And as a desktop preamp, it was great. I ran it into the Fozzie V3 monos. I ran it into the uh, ship, uh, the shit G horns that I have. Um, and I used it with the VO FT ones that they sent me. And you may have seen or may not yet have seen the review on these. I'm telling you what, for 150 bucks, that is a killer headphone, really impressive. And that combination was wonderful. I also used my Sennheiser Mastrop 6XX. I also used my vintage Sony MDR V6s. And I used a pair of Hyphenman HE 400 SEs. All of them sounded great. This performed admirably on everything. So I have zero complaints about it. I thought just as a DAC, it was really, really good. Plug in the fact that it's a great headphone amp and it's getting me back into listening to headphones, which I never thought anything would do, honestly, because I'm just not a headphone guy. This thing is a, look, the, one of the best recommendations I can give you for, for any product that I've done so far. Is it as good as the Cord Cutis? Probably not. Is it as good as the Gishelli Daisy, which you if I it may have seen the review, you may not have? Maybe not. It, it's not far off. Is it as good as a J2S? I would say it's equal to. The J2S is a little warmer, maybe a little base, better bass response, but this has a little better, better clarity through the mid-range and a little kind of more detailed top end without being harsh. So very comparable. Neither one of them is bad. None of them are bad. But this just is kind of a standout piece for me because I really, really love the way it sounded and the flexibility. And I ran it as a preamp into the Galleon XA75, excuse me, the, the TSA75, and it worked perfectly. Uh, just a great piece, high recommendation. Um, if you guys would consider purchasing one, there will be a link in the in the uh, pin description, in the pin comment, and in the video description for that. So, again, high recommendation for this. Very, very uh, pleased with its performance. Very, very pleased. I think that's everything. So, hopefully, you guys liked the video and you'll give me a like and a subscribe. And if you wish to support the channel, there's a thank you button at the bottom of the video window. And in the pin description and video description will be a link to join the channel if you so desire. Also in the video description are additional Amazon affiliate links other than this one. My playlists are there. Please continue to send me playlists. Please check out the community post with the playlist. There's great music there. Please comment. Let me know your thoughts about things. What do you think about uh, you know, headphone amps. What do you think about standalone DACs? What do you think about AKM? What do you think about anything? Tell me, please. Anyone who comments knows I respond to the comments and I enjoy that, that uh, feedback and conversation we have. I like that a lot. Um, I think I've covered all the bases. So please like, subscribe, comment, follow me on Instagram if you want. I'm at home with this is the old guy hi-fi channel saying now it's your turn to go sit down and put on a good pair of headphones and maybe listen to some wonderful music through a great DAC amp. Guys, thank you so much for your time. I am grateful for it. I really appreciate it. Have a wonderful day.